Welcome in to episode 26 of our Let's Play Humankind series at top difficulty. That's right, we're playing at Humankind difficulty. We are now late into the game. We are at the end of the industrial era. We are currently playing as the Mexicans, and this episode should see us move up to the final era, to the contemporary era. End game conditions are at play. And we will be seeing just how quickly we can get towards the end of a game here based on the scenario that we find ourselves in. We'll talk a little bit about all of the cultures in the contemporary era, and I also uh, will hopefully be discussing some of the end game conditions and particularly what impacts those and how we're going to go about kind of going for those based on the scenario that we find ourselves in in this particular game and maybe how that would differ if things had gone a little bit differently in the game. If you need to catch up on any of the few previous episodes that led up to this point, turn 204 here in the industrial era, uh, in the link below, there is a link to episode, in the description below, sorry, there is a link to episode one of the series you catch up on everything that has gone on to get us to this point. Let's get in to the game. Here we are, of course. Right back into our capital city of Anug, 79 people strong now. You can see, as we have gone through the last few episodes in the industrial era as the Mexicans, just how impactful choosing an agrarian culture was. Uh, obviously, we go back and show you uh, the Mexicans have the plus 10% food on all cities, and we've been building in these beautiful haciendas, which boost our food by enormous amounts um, on our city. So not only did we get the plus 10% food, not only did we research microbiology, which we talked about, we also got haciendas. So we're really set up for growth throughout the rest of the industrial and contemporary eras. Um, so like, we were stuck on what, 50 pop or something for quite a while here in our capital. And ever since that we have moved uh, to the Mexicans and, and in the into the industrial era, we have very much uh, been growing uh, up to 80 population now. Um, and we can check we're actually uh, over pop pap pop cap by just a little bit and we're once again starting to experience some stability trouble uh, and this is part and parcel of we never chose a culture throughout the course of this game that really boosted our stability in any way shape or form so we are essentially using only what has been given to us to boost stability now there are, that's a lot of things there's a lot of options we have wonders that are boosting stability we have uh, holy sites that are boosting stability and if you remember we did choose the final tenant that got us a couple of extra holy sites so we have a lot of potential stability around and yet we are still suffering from some stability problems um, some of that is due to the level of population that we have some of it is due to that we don't have all of our infrastructures in um, necessarily some of that is probably due to the fact that we may need to adjust some civics and different things like that we also didn't choose anything that really benefits our stability necessarily from a tenant standpoint in our religion so there are things that you can do cultures you can choose throughout the game that might boost your stability on a more regular basis and that can be helpful the other major thing that is impacting our stability is if we look at the trade we are not trading for a lot of different resources because we don't have good relationships with two of the top world powers besides us in Icarus and Plosif, Icarus has access to one, two, three, four, five different resources. We don't have access to any of those. Some of those are really potent resources. And so there's a lot of different luxuries we're not taking advantage of. So our FIMS number is suffering because we don't have access to those. But moreover, our stability number is suffering because we do not have access to uh, all of the stability that comes from those. The same could be said of uh, plosive, right? We're not trading for any of plosive stuff. Plosive's got a bunch of good things as well. So we're really not trading for much of anything. In fact, the only trade we currently have ongoing is with Nox. And I still have not figured out what happened here. And I, I am almost 100% certain that it is a, a bug. We can't trade with Burley. We have the ability to trade with him. Uh, I haven't seen anything going wrong over there either. And the biggest thing is, again, it's not that it's not that it's being like disrupted or that we're losing a partial sum of it and we just can't even trade like it's not it's not even here we can't even offer to pay for those resources so something has gone wrong this is not even any blockages that are listed so i'm not really sure what bug we ran into probably something to do with this game being pre-patch 
and then the patch happening mid-game and then post-patch. There's always going to be weird stuff that happens with that, so... We have a couple of goals. We need to get our haciendas in. I believe our capital is the only other place that's building haciendas. We're just going to hard build them in, I think. I don't think we're going to one-turn any of them necessarily, because we can still get some other stars. Um, so we're going to build in our haciendas. And then uh, we have left on our star chart... <laughs> Uh, we need to get two science stars. I want to get these science stars. They're easy to get. We might as well get them. We need to research those sciences anyway to advance uh, our sciences in the next era regardless. Uh, and we might be able to pick up, you know, a diplomat star along the way, perhaps uh, one of these stars. R realistically, maybe the diplomat star. I'm not even sure if we'll get any of these, but we'll grab these two science stars before we move up, get our haciendas in. But as soon as these science stars are in, our haciendas will be done at that point. And we will then be moving up into the contemporary era and essentially beelining for an endgame condition. We'll take a look at those endgame conditions uh, as we get towards that point and talk about why we're going to beeline. Uh, because we already have over a 2,000 fame lead. We have no need to sit, wait, let other people catch up in fame. Uh, we don't want any of those catch-up mechanisms to happen. Because we're winning. So we want to end the game as quickly as possible, right? Now, could be completely different. If you are in second place, third place, and you're trying to move up uh, by before the game ends, then you may be going after some different mechanisms to be able to acquire more fame, and you might not be trying to end the game right away. You probably would still take a similar path to what we're going to do because of the fame gains you get by going down this route, uh, but you wouldn't actually end trigger the end game condition when we get there. So we'll talk a little bit more through that as we go. Let's do a quick treaty check. Uh, we have several crises here. I'm going to go ahead and renounce at least I these know. three. Uh, and hopefully uh, we can avoid war uh, again. Uh, we are buffing up our navy, right? We have a, a lot of steam frigates. And we're actually going to put uh, an ironclad with those as well um, to combat the fact that Plosif has upgraded uh, his units as well. We want to be sure uh, that we have some way to defend ourselves, particularly via the seas, if that is to happen. Uh, we're also we're working on upgrading our armies here. We do have our, our folks upgraded to musket men. Uh, the Seminyahas still can't be upgraded, and I'm not sure that they ever will be able to be. Uh, and then we need to upgrade these guys, but we're going to wait because I don't want to upgrade them to halberdiers. It's just not worth it. Uh, at some point in the contemporary era, there is a boost that takes you past halberdiers for, for those folks. So uh, we'll wait to upgrade them until then. Hopefully we get there before anything breaks out as far as war is concerned. Uh, we are, again, struggling with stability, so we're going to keep an eye on that. But let's go ahead and roll into more turns. Another gaining population. Aeronautics is now researched, and that's a big one because, again, when you research aeronautics in the tech tree, that is your connection straight through to rocket science. So if you're going for that space station, the space race endgame condition, once you have researched aeronautics, you have the straight line in to get to rocket science and start those projects up for the space station. You're going to have to deviate uh, back down to get uh, access to uranium. So we'll want to do that kind of first thing, right? Uh, and then all of that becomes contingent upon what resources you have access to. Now, we have a potential problem facing us because if in our empire, we do not have access to the proper resources to be able to build those, A, it's either going to be too expensive to build, B, we're ahead so we won't be able to trade for them. And then the biggest problem is we actually don't have good trade relationships with just about anybody and our trade with Burley is broken. So we won't really be able to trade for any of those resources either, which is problematic. Uh, so we've got some things uh, that are not like uh, like perfect for us, right? I uh, will go encyclopedia first. We're going to try to hit these three that we have boosted, right? Because we might as well because that gives us an edge. Uh, we'll hope that, you know, like, like, line formation is boosted as well. So we can research the ones that are boosted currently. That will get us the most bang for our buck as far as our science is concerned. Uh, and then we'll be able to kind of move on from there. We'll let them sit for a little while. These guys are going to hang out uh, just like they have been. We haven't upgraded these guys yet, uh, but we're, we are, we're churning through gold pretty fast. Like, we got, we got some pretty good gold heading into our bank. Uh, Corral is going to... Geez, we don't have all our hamlets in yet, which would be big. Uh, but let's look down here and see if we can't just boost our science by a drastic amount. Uh, honestly, I'll take 14 and 32. Like, that's fine. Arguably, we should probably put this hospital in. Uh, we need more Sohitra to get that in at a cheap rate. Nine turns. 32 stability is very nice. It would solve all of our stability problems here. 
Uh, we are over pop cap here or at pop cap here. So if we can find something that will boost our slots, that would be nice. Ah, plus two access on salt petra deposit. So if we want to build manufactories in our cities. That would be highly advantageous to build manufactories in our cities. Uh, 190 money. Every build here is incredibly expensive, though. They only have 68 excess food here. Grain silos actually would potentially be helpful for them. Uh, although, again, they're over pop cap. But let's get let's go grain silos here uh, to get us started. And then let's look. Where is... I want to just quick, quick check where our salt petra is. Huatu had some. And Huatu is building an artisan's workshop. We need to get them on... Oh, what's the lead in? Do they have one already? I don't think they do. Ah, Artisan's Workshop goes to Manufactory. Perfect. So we'll build the Artisan's Workshop, then we'll go to Manufactory to increase that Saltpetra deposit. That is literally our only deposit of Saltpetra. So uh, we're going to get plus two on that, I guess, and that'll be it. That's as far as we're going to go unless we get the trade for some. But I think that's our only one. Uh, a quick calculation will tell us we have uh, one, two... Five. Okay, five unknown resources in our territory. That's not great news for us, because that means we have not discovered oil. We have not discovered uranium. What is the... Uh, if, uh, and aluminum, probably, right? Oh my gosh, we are going to be resource short. I am relatively certain. Depending on the numbers that come out of those particular deposits, this is going to be a challenge uh, to get some of the endgame conditions built. So we'll have to see how that flows. That's going to be very interesting as we get towards that point. All right, let's continue on. Nations, that's fine. Our boats are hanging out. I don't know, is there... Yep, there's going to be big fights that go on over here as the war continues to rage. Uh, Icarus already making some progress taking land, although Plosif has taken uh, San Lorenzo back, and Huatu is our next city on the list. You can see they have 284 excess food. They're just under pop cap, which is nice. Let's skip them back on export policy, uh, and then we will have them build the manufactory. Uh, we want the manufactory in. We're actually lacking in copper. Uh, which is interesting. But we want this manufactory in because we will increase our salt pizza access by two, which will help us in a lot of different ways. So I'm just going to go ahead and build that in. Probably even buy it in if we wanted to, to make that go a little faster. But let's let's call that good for now. And we'll keep trucking. All right, Anug has built another hacienda, so that's good. Uh, banish unbelievers. Uh, under unbelievers. Let's check our civics tree. This would be free for us, and it doesn't look like... Perfect. So they it's actually, it is banished population, so I think we will we'll enact that. It actually will shift us towards getting a little more stability in some of our cities, which would be a good thing for us. Currently. And Anug is going to place their second to last Hacienda. We can get another one in over here, which we probably will do. Uh, 15, it doesn't matter. We're just going to put it in. Get that built. And we are rocking and rolling. Crawl gains pop. We have another research ticked off of our research tree. Coral needs to build something. <clears throat> Let's get them back on expert policy just to make sure we see exactly what's happening. They're actually five below pop cap, so that's pretty nice. Uh, and we could focus on <clears throat> building any pieces here that would be beneficial to them. Now we're going to get access to more. Oh, it's because 14. That's why. So we're only getting two more. Honestly, we should probably set our cities. Because we don't have to have any builds right now, probably set most of our cities just to build those. There's 172 food here, so we don't have to have food. Sawmill would be great uh, if we start polluting really heavily, but... So, part of me says... Actually, most of me uh, says, we'll ju let's just start building the hospitals. Uh, let's get the hospitals in, because that will continue to push our stability in the right direction. So we'll just get people... We got, again, if they've got, they've got, like, pop cap and, like, Corral is a great example of where that is highly beneficial for us. Again, 16 turns to build a hospital here? I mean, what is the buyout on that? 41,000. I don't think I'm gonna, I, I can't, 16 turns is too much. <laughs> That's too much. We'll take the 59 science over four turns. That's crazy how expensive that is. Okay, so we're gonna, just gonna come back down here. Uh, grab this, probably grab military coordination and nationhood. Those are going to be kind of our techs. We're just trying to research the easy stuff now, right? 
Urum has gained pop. Aware of what's happening in the land. We want to check our trees as well at this point. Agra has gone over pop cap, and stability is becoming a factor here. And run down here. A 13 turn build to a hospital. That's not that's not the worst thing, and they actually don't have a lot of like awesome stuff to build. Six turns to 240 money would be pretty nice. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna again. I want to get the hospitals in from a stability standpoint because uh, we're gonna need them as we start building districts in the final era. We're gonna want those hospitals in. Let's do a quick treaty check. To demonstrate your custom. I, I can't. I don't. Um, I guess we just sign like a science. I have a proposition. He's not gonna it. accept anything anyway. Uh, that's fine, and that's all we need to talk about with everybody. So I think we're just rolling right along. A nug gaining pop. There's our research. There is our second science star. We still need one more. As we observe, early making some movements. Doesn't look like anything's happening here. There's still a war raging uh, on this border right here. So I think all the troops have been committed in that direction. As Icarus and Plosif continue to war it out. All right. Uh, we'll go to our research tree. Uh, again, we want whatever is boosted. So let's keep... Uh, we get pretty close to our move-up condition. We just need one more science star. Worm is now starving. So they grew, and now they're starving. And they're... Oh, they're building a boat. So once that boat is done... Uh-oh. But another attack we have to deal with from some rebels or free people of some sort. So in three turns, Urum will be solved. Because this is a decrease of... what? How many pop? Like a, a bunch of pop, right? Uh, to build this. So... Just buy this out for the 5,000. Just finish building that. Oh, they have a Hacienda to put in still. Oh, okay. So we're just going to buy this. That's an easy buy. It's only 5,000 to finish it. We'll buy that. That will fix their food problem because it will decrease their pop. They were way over pop cap. Holy smokes. Okay, they don't have all these. In. Oh, they had one more to put in. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's fine. Let's get there. So five turns, that Hacienda's in. But again, after one, we'll have put in turns to have it built. This guy's going to come and join this fleet. Now we have an ironclad flanked by a bunch of steam frigates, so that's nice. Uh, we could upgrade these guys at any point. Uh, a nug has one final Hacienda to put in. Uh, that is fine. We'll just stick it on this island with everything else. They're at a 66% stability in a nug. I am not loving that. Uh, we have so many stability things here. The fact that a nug is struggling with that is crazy to me. Okay. Uh, I don't know where these rebels are coming from. It might be spy actions or something that's causing those to trigger. Um, but we have attackers. Night attackers. Just three of them uh, against our uh, much, much better. Even our draftees are better than that. Um, we instant resolve. Do we lose any units? Okay, so we're just going to instant resolve that. We it, that One of our units takes damage, but it's... As long as we don't lose any of our units, so let's resolve that. That is no problem for me. We'll get those armies healed back up again. Oh, I combine these. Can we combine these two now? No, we're one off. Combine. Uh, one of our techs might be getting us there pretty quick here. Okay, let's keep rolling. We're just churning uh, turns at this point. Uh, boats still floating around. We're kind of just ignoring the rest of the world at this point. Letting them do their thing. Wars are still raging. Watu has now increased our Saltpetra deposit, so we now have five Saltpetras, so that's at least the best we're going to do there. Uh, stability here is dropping like an actual rock. <laughs> so, it's a 14-turn build on the hospital, but I think, uh, I think that has to be the direction we go. Oh, unless oh, we have the science... Oh, two researcher scientists. Okay, let's get the manuscript atelier in first. That will get us back uh, to pop cap levels. Us be fine there. Palace Putra is about to go down on food as well. Uh, they just got in their inventor's workshop, which is fine. And they're going to need some more food now. So let's think about 14 turn build into the hospital here. So that went down by a bit uh, with those extra salt Petra that we got. Uh, it went down by a bit. It's still production cost is increased by 64 because we don't have access to more salt Petra, which is wild. Uh, again, we're not trading with anybody basically at this point because we can't trade with Burley because of the that bug that we've come come across. So that's become problematic for us at this point. 84 food for the fertilizer plant. But again, our salt petra is causing us substantial problems. They're growing in two turns. 
Uh, probably faster just to put a farmer's quarter in. Uh, how much food did I get? 25 food? I'll uh, put in a farmer's quarter. Uh, I think I think that's just the best way to go. Let's check Burley again. A pleasure to see you again. Can we trade? Actually, it's for Nox. sore eyes. Just horses. Like Nox also has no resources. It's very ugh, man. It's getting frustrating. That's the, the our lack of salt pizza is frustrating. This is one of the things that I think is an important point for end game, but it's, it's it gets important here as well as you hit kind of late game too. Strategic resources seem kind of lackluster at the beginning of the game. The luxuries seem much more effective. The strategic resources, and as you are claiming land, one of the things to look for is, is there a strategic resource there? Even if you don't know what it is, that makes the land worth claiming because the future things that you might need that, that strategic resource for can be huge. So pay attention to that when you're claiming land. It can be very useful to skip over a piece of land that maybe looks really good, has maybe rivers and good fims, but if it doesn't have a strategic or a luxury in it, it might be better off going for one of those ones that has the resource in it, because that's going to set you up for future success in a game of humankind. Uh, because as you can see, you end up in a situation like this, where trade has become very difficult, then it is going to be problematic. Uh, when you're going for those sort of things. We're, like, winning ambushes all over the place, apparently. Two of them against... against Plosive, so who knows what's going on there. We have a civics vote to do. <clears throat> Let's check this out. Uh, plus 20 war support increase when winning a battle on Imperialist Empire. Plus 10 war support increase when winning a battle on Relations. Uh, I, I seem to remember that if you... Basically, it's like an either-or. If you pick... If you pick this then you get a, be a benefit against anyone who picked this. And if you pick this, you get a benefit against anyone who picked this. So it's like, it's like both, um, which is interesting because like you get plus 20 against Imperialists, uh, but it, it, Imperialists get, uh, I don't know what relations means. I'm not sure what that means. This one you get plus 20 for someone who picked Imperialist. I don't really want to be opposite of Icarus, so I think we'll just vote Imperialists? I'm not really sure. I don't really care about this one. Maybe I won't even vote. Uh, this is problematic. In five turns, plus 100% war score is going to be affected, and we are the worst offenders. We have three people. I don't, I need to fix, we need to fix that somehow. Do a quick check on civics again. Your religion doesn't help us with that. I need a civic to get me away from that, or an event, or something. Uh, we are driving towards a potential very problematic place where if war breaks out, it's gonna get ugly real fast. This beautiful boat with those. They can just hang out. Uh, Huatu has... Well, they need stability here. Uh, we got in that. We're still over pop cap though, because they grew again. Do we have any other ones that will increase our slots? Honestly, I have half a mind to just start putting turns towards the hospital. Um, I'm just going to do that with everybody. We're just going to try to get these hospitals in. Uh, if we could trade for Salt Petra, that would be really helpful. I, I just think we're going to need the hospitals at some point. From a stability standpoint. I, there are other things that we can research to help with that, but uh, we'll just roll that way. Let's see. Uh, we get plus one to armies. Let's go, let's go line formation as our next one. And we'll just keep rolling here. Uh, let's check. I will listen Price. to you if ah. you must, but That's know that I resent it. A mere oh. renounce each of these. I can see oh. the gain it some more be best. of that diplomacy. Maybe we could pick up a diplomat star by the end of this. Uh, we're just waiting on science, I believe. Pounce of Putra is now starving, which we knew was going to happen, right? Uh, we were already aware of that. They have a torpedo boat over there. I never support my allies because you don't get anything for doing it. It, it doesn't... I feel like it's not impactful enough on the game to support your allies. Maybe that could be changed in the future. Uh, in one turn, we would be losing people. We could just buy out this farmer's quarter, <clears throat> which would solve that particular problem. Uh, we've got the gold to do it. We also just buy out a unit. If we want, again, we have, we can buy runners for like ridiculously cheap. It's a, uh, it's a cheap and easy way to do stuff. All right. Uh, this guy's just hanging out, I guess. Back to auto explore. Go find more, go find more stuff. Oh, did everybody get reset? 
What happened to all of my envoys? Boats are still just hanging. Oh, oh. Joseph? Joseph, hi, you got some boats. Just like hanging out in the water, eh? I'm gonna send my boats out. We're gonna present an aggressive front. I come bearing steam! An inventor engineer ostracized from her own country on the account of her religion has come to you offering her scientific expertise. She wishes to settle in the city of Anug, where she believes she could work productively. Her pioneering work on the fundamentals of engines could be vital. The fact that she's not a follower of madness could make things difficult. What do you say to her? Uh, we can reject her. Uh, which moves us one towards world. I don't know why that would move us one in that direction, but apparently it does. Uh, we can get plus uh, science. We could use her. Uh, we'll need to bribe a nug to hide her. We can naturalize her. Uh, forces the choice between open mindedness and religious tolerance. Uh, also gets us the science. Gets pushes us towards science. Uh, either of these works for me. Uh, let's look at the differences between open minded. Forces open minded on religious tolerance. So we are currently under plus faith, and adds grievances against empires with different state religion. I don't mind having open-minded, actually. The faith we don't really need anymore. Let's check our faith output really quick. Oh. <laughs> uh, madness has spread across the land. We could definitely afford... We can afford to switch to open-minded, and in fact, open-minded gets us more influence, which will generate more stars, which is the better option. Uh, let's naturalize. Let's naturalize it. I like that idea. We'll go that way, and then we will end turn. Are our haciendas all in? I think they will be here shortly. Corral, Anug, and Agra all gaining pop, which means they might all start losing pop on the next turn, just because that's where we are. The end of a foreign war. Oh, that's right. Icarus was also at war with Burley. Let's see what happened with that war. Burley has gained a city. I think Burley won that war. Well, I'm not sure. What happened here? I, did Icarus own that? I, I don't know. The, the, the landscape is shifting dramatically as we speak. So Icarus was warring on two fronts. It looks like he is actually going to lose both of those wars, potentially. Um, which is not great news for Icarus. So one war ending. And Joseph's boats are just... I have to attack them. Like, I can't not attack them? <clears throat> He's got just boats floating out here. He's a, he's constantly yelling at me. He's gonna retreat. That's fine. I don't think we'll be able to fight him in here, so we'll just let him run his units away. These boats are still hanging out. There's a lot. Oh, lots of uh, lots of stacking over here as well. Ah, four ironclads and four steam frigates. So uh, naval supremacy uh, being touted by Plosif here. Uh, I would assume he's probably going after Icarus pretty hard, so there's going to be some big naval fights here. That's a that's a big... Those are big boats. Those are some big boats. Four ironclads is a ton of population poured into military, uh, specifically navy. All right. Uh, Anug is way over pop cap. Anug also done building their haciendas. Um, man, we get some huge science boost from here. Here's something to help with our pop cap problem. There's 79 science in one turn. There's another 26. I mean, let's just get the science. We just get the science in. Let's just do it. This is flood science. Like hardcore science. We got 1,711 surplus food. Sweet goodness. Uh oh, stability is dropping very fast though. Oh, uh, oh, they don't have their apothecary in yet. Okay, let's let's speed build the apothecary first. And then we'll probably put in the hospital there as well. Okay. Haciendas are in there. Altiputra has now gained population again, which is, again, not, it's not like the most bestest thing for us, necessarily. Where's Plosive's boats? I can't run this attack without war, right? Because I can't fight in early space. We'll hide ourselves in this fog over here. See if they'll come out. Corral is looking to build something. They are low on food in Corral. Uh, they got their hospital in, though, so our first city that is that is now progressing up to Settled, which is really nice, uh, so their hospital is in. They are just over Pop Cap, and we could start putting Hamlets in. Let's do a quick check. 
on what we could gain from some of these. Honestly, we should probably just build everything that's one turnable. We should just build to see what the next thing is. I think that's what I'm going to do right now. Just click on those and just get them in, in some of these cities. Because we need to build our infrastructures up regardless. Okay, final Hacienda is in in Urim. So all Haciendas are now in. They are well over pop cap. Stability is dropping rapidly. Uh, and we will 10 turn in a hospital here. Uh, that gets us three researcher slots that could help as well later on. So let's, but let's do that first. Make sure we get hospitals in where we can. Food has been solved in Palace Future for a short period of time. And we might want this hospital now. I'm just going to continue cracking at this hospital problem. All right, tech tree. Let's go with the cheapest one we have. There is a two. And that is going to put us really close to moving up. Uh, oh, no, we need more techs. Ow. Well, we can move up at any time now. But we're trying to get those tech stars. Very intriguing. We're getting more uh, leverage, which is good. Another random... We have to go back to that, I guess. But another fight here. We're just constantly uh, sending units at us. We have conscripts now, so they upgraded. It's three knights again, so we're not going to lose instant result of that fight. Uh, and then, now, uh, uh, let's, uh, we can upgrade these guys to musket, uh, line infantry now. I think we do that. What are these guys upgrade to? Dragoons. Okay, so let's, let's, that's big. So we can finally upgrade our Semenyahas. Semenyahas. I don't, look. That's crazy. Perfect. We're going to pay for the upgrades. Let's get this army upgraded. Uh, what can these guys go to? These conscripts have 49 attack. Uh, they also upgrade to line infantry. Okay, so halberdiers go to line infantry effectively is what we've learned. Uh, let's get these guys upgraded. Uh, let's just spend the money. Obviously, there are some potential issues happening over here. And we can't quite combo them together yet. Uh, it doesn't look like right. Oh, no, we can. Uh, civics osmosis. Conscripts. Minus 30% on industry costs on... Uh, that's fine. It doesn't... That one doesn't matter either way, and I'd rather not take the stability loss, so we'll just... Uh, we'll just replace that. That's fine. How is that going, by the way? Not well over there. We're fine in our own land, but the New World, uh, Icarus still has full cultural control over. Alright, these boats are hanging out. Plosive's guys have not moved, uh, so let's move our guys back to where they were before. And we'll take a look over here. We may want to upgrade these boats as well. Just in case they were to get attacked, they would have a chance. Although these ships are much bigger than that. Either way, they'd be gone at this point. So we'll we'll leave them for a second. And I think we'll just... Uh, I think it's science is done. There's one more science. There's a merchant star. So it's an extra little merchant star that we like. Agra needs a little bit of help. So we'll go check that out. Population in two turns, they'll be dropping pop. They did just finish their hospital. So again, uh, heading towards that nice surplus... We are well over pop cap here. And what will be our fix for them? They need food, actually. We get 50 food from gain silos, but that will take three turns. Uh, but that's our best bet, right? Now, right? Uh, and we could just buy that out to fix their problem. Uh, and in fact, I think we will. We'll just buy that. Now they're going to grow in two turns, which is fine. We want to we want continued growth, right? So we may want to just uh, put some... 106 food for a fertilizer plant. Very worth it. Agra, build that so you can keep growing in the next era. Chips are hanging out. We didn't actually take... Brow has put in all of their one-turn things. They are at 33 food growing in one turn, so they're going to need more food here in just a moment. Uh, there is two turns and food, and then we'll take a look at them later at that point. A Nug! Uh, which I just love that a Nug is where they're at now. It feels good. They have stability problems. There's the hospital. Let's get the hospital in. Let's get this in as well for the re for the slots to help to decrease our pop cap problem. And we need to research something else. We're going to continue with whatever is cheapest. Uh, let's go to electricity. Oh, electricity actually. Uh, we probably should have done electricity a while ago. Gives us bonuses on coal. Um, it, that, it, it is handy. It is handy. And I think you actually get fame for doing that one, if I recall. You do it first, but I can't remember. Let there be light, uh, two turns away, and there it is. As I just mentioned, uh, let there be light. Discover electricity, 52 fame for Icarus. We neglected to go after that one because I just don't have all of those memorized, uh, which is unfortunate, but 
So remember, electricity is worth fame, and Corral is back to starving uh, again. They will decrease in two turns, but our grain silos will be built in one, so we don't need to worry about that. That will all be fixed. Oh, we can buy some. Purchase. Nox has gotten access to new things. We like this. Okay, we have bought everything from her. It's like the old. Tell me oh! what is on your mind. It's back! They're back! This is huge for us! Look, we just got access to, to... Oh my goodness, look what we just got access to. Give me your coal. Oh, all of this came back, and that is huge for us. That probably explains why some of our... I wonder if it was because of the war. I wonder... I don't... I, I don't know why these disappeared. They were just not there at all. Uh, I wonder if it was because of the war. His war is over now, so we got access back or something like that. But that's huge. Five extra salt feature for us. Uh, that is big news for us. Very cool. Uh, I just bought a bunch of stuff without even trying for a customs union, so we'll just try for a science exchange again. This proposition Burley's been refusing all of those, so that's not a surprise. Though I'd as soon see you bleed us speak. And no one else is going to talk to us, so that's totally... All right. <clears throat> Plugging away. Ooh. Interesting. Here we go. The first person to move up to the final era. Icarus moving up and taking the Singaporeans, interestingly enough. So we see now our endgame conditions have popped up. We'll read through them really quick. Uh, again, endgame, not game winning conditions. These are endgame conditions. The Emperor with the most fame will be declared the, the victor. We have earning every contemporary era star. That is very difficult to do because expansionist stars are incredibly difficult to come by unless you are warring a ton. Uh, so that will be that one is hard. Uh, that's a hard ender. Unlocking all endgame technologies. This is one that I've seen done relatively frequently. Uh, you got to push science really hard. It does take a while to do. Eliminating all the other empires. I've never done this before. Uh, we might try that at some point. It might be fun. Uh, vassalizing all surviving empires. Uh, I've never seen that either. Uh, it seems like a difficult thing to do. Send a mission to Mars. This is my go-to end game condition. This is the one we'll be going for today. And then, of course, you have rendering the world unfit for human life. You can pollute to a certain level to, to cause end game as well. I've never done that one either. I think that might be a fun one to try. Uh, I think that may be in our future for like a let's play in the distant future, possibly. Uh, a, a pollution game where we like intentionally try to pollute uh, to the to the end. I, I've never tried to do it before, so it might be kind of fun. We'll be going for sending a mission to Mars. I believe it is the fastest endgame condition, and also typically will net you the most fame. Uh, unlocking all techs also is a really good way to net a bunch of fame. There's a lot of fame available at the very end of the tech tree. That's something you can push for if you're behind a little bit, going for that. Uh, but Icarus going to the Singaporeans. We'll talk in a minute about the Singaporeans when we go through all the cultures. Um, but an interesting... Uh, happening now as Icarus has moved up. All right, and we have Watu is now starving, so let's go get a check on Watu. They're losing in one turn. We have 21,000 gold and the ability to very quickly and very cheaply get them four food, which will that won't help them, will it? Uh, so we'll just go with this for 8,000. That will solve their problems. That's why I like to keep gold on hand, solve any of those types of issues. Rawl will be looking to build something. 78 food growing in two turns, so food continues to be a problem here. They have their hospital in, which means they are progressing well. And in fact, every time we put in a research slot, they will actually get additional... Uh, they'll get stability out of that. Obviously, the research quarter will decrease, but every time we get a new researcher, uh, they will uh, increase in stability because of our hospital, right? So... Uh, university will get us only 20 science, which is not awesome. Uh, I think we just go, like, with the one-turn idea here again. Uh, so, even though it doesn't get us, like, a ton, if we can one-turn it in, I think we do it. And I think we could probably start moving towards hamlets here now. Uh, it's a 52-food hamlet. So I think we'll start start going in that direction as well. Lightning in a bottle. There we go. We got this our, new power our will impact every aspect of society. From public safety to industrial production, change is coming. Uh, we have indeed collected some extra stars. So we got uh, an extra steat star. We got, uh, sorry, a steat star. We got a merchant star as well. We're not going to get any more of those. Uh, we're close to that diplomat star. But again, we have one tech and then we're just going to move up. We're not going to push for that diplomat star at all. We'll just, if it, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And we will check our final tech. So we'll be moving up in four turns. 
All right, let's keep plugging away. Four turns, and then we move up. Agra needs some help, so let's jump over to Agra. Ah, end of a war. A large war has just ended. We're about to see the results of that. One turn, and they will be losing pop. We'll just buy out the fertilizer plant. Easy decision. They will now be growing. Uh, I'm not keen on polluting quite yet, I don't think. Uh, unless it's for food. Polluting for food is okay. And then if you do whale fishing, I like to make sure you get whale fishing in all at the same time because it does trigger an event to end whale fishing uh, after you do it after, at some point. So if you want to maximize your use of whale fishing, oftentimes you will want to put it in in all of your cities almost simultaneously. They benefit from the food because you'll end up having to basically retract it uh, unless you want to keep doing it. It's got some pun punishments associated with it, though. Uh, so uh, since we're going to move up here shortly, I think starting to get more districts in is a really good idea. So let's work on some hamlets because we don't have all of those in yet. And, and we'll just keep... Uh, crank it. Oh, we need to see the end of that war. How did the war end? Uh, Plosif gaining an additional city. Icarus is... Look at Icarus's land now. Icarus, the first to move up, has picked the Singaporeans. Icarus has lost just about everything. We have one. There is a free people here. They're, like, being so heavily invested in it, it doesn't even matter at this point. Uh, so being the Singaporeans, completely and utterly almost useless in this particular game... All right, uh, we are very far over pop cap. We still have food just galore. Uh, so I think we maybe go with, oh, we got science available to us in droves. 173 science, 98 science, and 36 science. So we'll go that direction in this city. That sounds like a good plan. And we have another, wow, just again. Um, so this is an instant resolve again. Our units are getting some nice, experience out of that so all right here we go end turn that'll get us our last tech and then we will go through the cultures of the contemporary era and that will bring us to the conclusion of our episode and we will make our selection the rule of warfare has been researched our science star is earned that is our final science star we have three cities Kral, urim and palataputra that have entered starvation so we have to go fix that really quick all right, uh, Huatu is not starving. In fact, this is a perfect spot for Huatu for now. Zero food, so they're not going to grow. They're just going to sit there. <laughs> that works nicely, uh, because that means what we can do is throw in some stuff that doesn't impact that at all. We'll go with that for now. I don't want to push food, because then they'll start growing again. Uh, well, let's, let's just... I'll put that in. Night Stalker! The heaving metropolis of Palatoputra sprawls across the landscape. It's vast working population wedged into very every pocket of space from industrialization uh, from industrial sanchees to market side slums every day many of its citizens travel far and wide and sometimes find themselves lost in the wrong part of town perfect hunting grounds for a murderer and now one stalks the night 13 victims struck down over the last three months and citizens are terrified what will you do uh this is another one of those i, I love the events this is another one of those that uh just 200 money just doesn't make an impact at this point in the game Whatever triggers this, that it, again, needs to be rebalanced, right? Uh, installing street lamps across the city will help put citizens' mind at ease. Costs us only 200, and it pushes us in the direction of science. Uh, perfectly fine with me. I do not mind that at all. Uh, we can ignore it. What are 13 small lives among thousands? Chance of terrible consequences. I've never done this one before. I'm always interested in seeing what it does, but we're not going to do it. I can't, I can't bring myself to do that. So we'll pay the 200. It's an easy decision. Typically, uh, they need to balance that. It needs to cost. It needs to cost way more uh, to make that choice, right? Um, again, I lo love the event, though. The event is pretty fun. All right, uh, let's run through our cities because a couple of them were starving. So we basically need to buy a unit here. That will save them for another turn. Uh, let's just go through. Karal is building a hamlet in two, so they're fine. Uh, Anug is fine. Urum is dropping in thirty-one turns, so we don't need to worry about Urum in particular. Uh, we can pick a science. It'll just be one turn that we put towards this, so we'll just pick urban planning. Because uh, we, as we look at our stars, have acquired our final science star. So we have all the agrarians, all the militarists, all the science stars. We have one merchant, two estate. We're very close to getting our third diplomat star. We don't need it. If we did, we would stick around for it. Uh, we have a substantial lead at this point. We do not need that star. We got a lot of different stars in this era. That is a great place for us to move up. So we will end this episode with a review of the contemporary era cultures. We, of course, could transcend. 
we don't particularly need to. Uh, most of the time going into this final area, you're not going to transcend because you're only getting a 10% bonus on the final stars. I like early transcends, but I don't like late transcends in particular. Let's talk Singaporeans really quick. The ones that have already been chosen. Uh, plus 50% city absorption cost. The objective, if you picked the Singaporeans, would be to actually absorb as many cities as possible into one. Uh, you get minus uh, plus 10 stability per number of attached territories on the capital. So basically, they want you to make one giant city. Uh, and then you get a fame bonus per client state. This used to be incredibly potent and would win a lot of games of humankind. Client states used to be very good. They're still good if you take the Singaporeans, but the benefits of having client states are very low now, low-ish, and it's very difficult to keep client states late in the game. Lots of people invest in them, and it's hard to keep your percentages high enough to, to be client states. This used to be a big one. I don't think the Singaporeans are quite as good anymore. The communal housing is really interesting because you actually cannot put communal housing down um, unless you have unused city cap slots. So again, you could take huge advantage of this if you combined all your cities into one, and you can put more than one communal housing down in each territory because you can place one as many times as you have unused city cap slots. It's a very interesting quarter. Uh, it's a farmer's market, but it gets adjacencies to lots of things, so they're kind of function like you want them in the middle of everything. I, I think it's an interesting play. I usually just don't have... I have too many cities, and I think that having a lot of cities is actually beneficial. So I, Singaporeans used to be a big play for me when this 5% fame bonus for client states was big. Not a big play for me anymore, necessarily. The Cubans are really fascinating. Internationalism gets you plus combat strength on Alliance uh, and on Allied Empire's units, uh, which is fascinating. Uh, so if you contribute your units in, that'd be that's interesting. Uh, and plus 10 influence per, plus 10 percent influence per line. So again, this is not great because do we care about influence at this point in the game? Not particularly. Um, aesthetic cultures are really key at the beginning, uh, like your early eras. Really not at the end. Uh, but they do get the Impressa Pharmaceutica. I'm really intrigued by these. They're a research corner, which is good for the final era, and they create deposits of pharmaceuticals, which are automatically exploited. So each each territory, basically, you can create uh, this pharmaceutical uh, this pharmaceutical exploit, right? Um, and you get plus five food per farmer's quarter on overpopulated. We have a lot of overpopulated cities, so it basically helps you solve your farm your food overpopulation issues, which is interesting. You get plus five industry per worker on a settled city, plus five money, and plus five science per trader and researchers, respectively, on settled cities. We have been working towards getting our cities to settled status. Uh, these numbers are really interesting, and you get plus 10 stability on all pharmaceuticals on all cities. Plus 10 stability per pharmaceutical on all cities. Not just the one you put it in. You can fix your stability issues lightning fast, and if you have a settled city, you're getting plus five industry, plus five money, and plus five science per each of those. And if you're overpopulated, you're getting plus five food. I am actually very interested in the Cubans, and we might pick them. The Nigerians are another really interesting one. Uh, you get plus three industry per farmer, so combining industry with farm, that would actually be pretty potent for us. We'd get some pretty high industry out of that. And plus one farmer slot for all on all cities uh, if they have an oil deposit. Uh, so that's cool. Uh, and also, again, you create uh, oil deposits through them. Uh, you, these oil refineries are very specific. They have to be placed next to a river. They have to be placed on coastal water or lakes. So they're a little bit tricky to place. Uh, and they do in, uh, decrease your stability, right? So stability becomes a continued problem if you do this. Uh, but you can really boost your land from a farm and a, a industry standpoint. Uh, the Nigerians are a decent pick in my in my in my book. Uh, they're not bad at all. Uh, they can be a very nice pick here in the contemporary era. The Australians are the pick if you want to pollute the world 100 uh, percent plus 20 percent industry on all cities. That's a big number if you're going for uh, any any of the building like project base. So the space race end game condition. This is really nice. Uh, you also get the strip mining complex. It is just a maker's quarter, but it gets you a ton of industry. You can see if you're adjacent to strategics. 50 industry just from that alone uh and then obviously function as a maker's quarter so a uh, lot of potential benefits uh from having this and typically at this point in the game you would have some really nice uh areas right next to your strategics that you could put these as well so uh australians are big if you're gonna if you're trying to build your way to a win in the final era that's your play 
the Brazilians, if you want to grow, uh, like if you pick the, Mexicans into Brazilians and uh, like uh, there's a bunch of other ones. How did I say also, if you pair all those together, you can build your cities up to a massive population number. Uh, lungs of the planet plus three food on top producing food is it's actually underrated because this is plus three food on tiles producing food. They don't have to, they don't have to be exploited necessarily by the correct thing. I believe is the case. And so you actually like even even for example a barracks uh I think a garrison that it exploits the tiles around it but it doesn't exploit food it doesn't matter because if that food is a tile that produces food it actually gets the food on it then I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Uh, uh you can, can, can confirm that in the comments if that's the case. If you pick the Brazilians uh you also get the agronomy labs plus food per pop. It is a farmer's research quarter, which is really handy. Uh, the Brazilians are a really big choice. They're really nice if you want to push population while pushing science. That works. They work really well. The Chinese are interesting because I believe they are still the only merchant affinity culture in the contemporary era. Uh, plus 15% money on all cities is an instant huge boost. And the Congress is kind of so-so. Plus seven money per number of attached territories. You might be attaching, what, like five, six at the most or something like that. So, hey, you get some money out of that. Uh, plus three influence per adjacent market quarter. Doesn't gonna matter at this point in the game. Now, you do get a slot of each type, which is really nice. Uh, the Chinese are... They're okay. I, I They're not... I wouldn't gravitate towards them necessarily. Uh, the money is really nice. Maybe if you're struggling on money or if you want to just push like money in some way, uh, or if maybe you need like population problems you're having, Congress can maybe fix that. Uh, they're okay. Uh, nothing to write home about maybe. The Egyptians, on the other hand, uh, I don't know why, why would you pick them? I do not know. If you pick them regularly, let me know in the comments why. I am not sure why you'd ever pick them. Uh, plus four influence on emblematic district. It's a big number. You'd get a lot of influence. What are you going to do with that influence, though? I do not know. Uh, again, archaeological dig, uh, plus three influence on district, plus three influence on emblematic. Again, your influence is going through the roof. To what end? I do not know. Uh, plus five science on culture, or plus three science on cultural wonder. That's negligible at best. Uh, so I, I don't understand. This doesn't seem balanced very well. I think the Egyptians need to be rebalanced out. None of these numbers. Uh, in my opinion, make them worth choosing in this particular era. The Indians are very interesting. Plus five influence on territory, doesn't particularly matter, but plus three influence per number of territories in your sphere of influence on capital. You could basically turn your capital into a monstrous moneymaker if your culture has spread far and wide. If it hasn't, it makes the Indians kind of a poor choice. But if you're, uh, you actually saw this come to fruition in my other Let's Play series, in the Harbor Strat series, we picked the Indians at the end, uh, made for a wild amount of money. So it can be very good. They are an esthete culture, so that kind of hampers them a little bit. And their ashram is really so-so. Plus five influence and then faith on district. And I'll, yeah, on religious district, you're boosting by money and science. It's a common quarter building. Really so-so. So if your sphere of influence covers like the whole planet, you can make money in buku waves uh, if you if you do this. Like ridiculous amounts of money. If not, probably don't pick the Indians. The Japanese are arguably the best culture in this era. Minus 20% cost uh, when researching. That's huge because you want to get through text as fast as possible. And the robotics lab is fantastic as a final district. Plus five industry, only five pollution, plus five science. It counts as a makers and a research quarter. Uh, all of your makers quarters in the same territory are going to gain an influence, uh, sorry, are going to gain an industry. Uh, the same thing with research quarters. So the more of those you have, the more the robotics lab is going to benefit you. Uh, it gives you a worker slot and a researcher slot. It is a potent and arguably the best district in this era. The Japanese are, are your go-to, in my opinion. If the Japanese are available, I play them quite a bit because they're the fastest way to get to your endgame condition if you're going for the space race. They get you what you need. Production, science. Uh, there is very little I have to say about the Japanese that is negative. This is a fantastic, fantastic pick in the contemporary era. The Swedes, plus one science per district in all cities. That's big. Plus three science on research quarter. Again, get a lot of science out of this. Uh, and then the research institute gets you a whole bunch more science. That's great, but it's not the Japanese. It just gets you science. The Swedes are great, but they pale in comparison to the Japanese. 
Japanese are going to get you arguably just as much science, plus the reduction in tech cost is huge. And the Research Institute just is not as good as the Robotics Lab. Um, so, yes, if they're available and the Japanese aren't there, sure, you could potentially go Swedes as, as, as another science option, right? Uh, but the Japanese are going to pick over them every time. The Turks will get you a lot of food as well, and they again provide an interesting out. Uh, three food per pop, that's a huge number. You get, like, if you have food problems, solved instantaneously. And then the public school gets you science per farmer, which is pretty nice. Um, and it just counts as a research quarter. So again, if you're talking food, Brazilians gets you the, the food plus research. It'll, again, a little bit more versatility there. So you probably take Brazilians uh, over Turks, possibly. But there's some big numbers you can get here as well. The Turks are a very good pick. Another very good pick in this era. Uh, the Americans, plus three influence per resource, uh, resource access sold, and plus one money for ongoing trade. This is very so-so, in my opinion. Eh, you're going to get some money from this. It'll be a decent amount of money. Uh, and who cares about the influence, really? It's not great. Uh, they're also an expansionist, so I guess you could take over some places using your ability, maybe. But it's you know, if you, it's a lot of war to try to pull off to do that. Uh, the defense agency it looks like recently got changed, so it's actually better than it used to be. Uh, plus two combat strength is fine. And uh, then uh, on this is the one I think that changed on garrison, plus five money, plus five science. If you've gone with some sort of garrison strat where you have a lot of garrisons, this actually makes your garrisons even better. I can get on board with that. Uh, you do get a research market quarter out of it, but again, there's no, like, slots you're getting. You're not actually pushing science. If you don't have a bunch of garrisons down, it's just not that good. Um, I, there, I would not be picking the Americans very often, either. The Soviets, uh, minus 20 unit industry cost and plus 3 combat strength. This is your go-to if you want to take people out in the final era. If you want to go to war, the Soviets are your choice. You get access to the Red Army tank. And you get this arms factory. It's a market makers, which again, you can fund your war and you can build your war machine at the same time. It does cost you pollution. You're getting industry, uh, but you're getting access to these arms, uh, which makes your, your folks even better. All of your troops will be better than everyone else's essentially uh, when you go arms factory. So uh, definitely uh, Soviets are a pick if you want to head in that direction from a war standpoint. Uh, based on everything I've said, you might think, well, aren't you just going to pick the Japanese? Uh, I've picked the Japanese too many times. I've gone in this particular series with picking things I have not played before. I really want to give the Cubans a try. We are currently overpopulated by a substantial amount, and I feel like we have enough settled cities that we can take a huge advantage of the Cubans. I want to give them a shot. I, I don't particularly care for their trait at all, uh, but I want to see how good these Impressa Pharmaceuticas are. I have been looking at these and eyeing them the past several games I've played when I got to the Contemporary Era and thinking, when will I pick them? And I think this game is a really nice opportunity to see what will this do for our Fims as we uh, pick the Cubans. So we will pick the Cubans this time. I am excited to see what that does for us. Let's press the adopt button. And we'll watch our video and end this episode. The human mind, creative, imaginative, and ingenious at turning every single human invention to its most violent end. We pray or hope, looking forward to a future which, with luck, will be counted in millennia, not in months. A vibrant culture of food, dance, and music. And an international icon of revolution. Easy to see why the Cubans make an impression. All right. There goes our cities upgrading into the contemporary era. We will go through wonders and other things in the next episode. As we enter the contemporary era and push for our end game conditions... Thank you so much for watching this episode. I'm excited to see through to the conclusion of this over the next few episodes. If you like the content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and that you're subscribed to the channel with notifications on. I will see you the next episode of this next week.